We ask that the brothers uncover their heads, and we ask that the sisters cover their heads. We good to go already, Brother Darrell? Everything's good, Jedi? Okay. We're going to open up with the Lord's Prayer. Go ahead. Our Father, Our Father, which art in heaven, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth. Thy will be done in earth. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this day. Give us this day. Our daily bread. Our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. For thine and the power, and the, power. And, the glory. and the glory, forever. forever. Praise, the Lord. Praise the Lord, for He is good, for he is good. And, his mercy and His mercy endures forever. Praise the Lord God of Israel, Praise the Lord God of Israel. For, he is good. for He is good, and His mercy endures forever. And, his mercy forever. and in Jesus' name we pray, in Jesus name we pray. The, Holy One of Israel. the Holy One of Israel, the King of Kings, the King of Kings. and Lord of Lords. The one true God. The one true God. And there is no other. And there is no other. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our opening scripture is going to be from Psalms 29, 3 through 4, 7, 10, and 11. <clears throat> the voice of the Lord. The voice of the Lord. Is upon the waters. Is upon the waters. The God of glory. The God of glory. Thundereth. Thundereth. The Lord is upon many waters. The Lord is upon many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord divideth the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord divideth the flames of fire. The Lord sitteth upon the flood of the Lord sitteth upon the flood. Yeah, the Lord sitteth king forever. Yeah, the Lord sitteth king forever. The Lord will give strength unto his people. The Lord will give strength unto his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. The Lord will bless his people with peace. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearing, reading, and doing of his holy word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Is Sister Tanya, did I get it right? Trina, okay. Sister, uh, I ain't gotta, I'm not gonna ask. Um, obviously, Sister Trina, yes, is gonna come up here and do a song for us, and then we'll start with today's lesson. Happy Sabbath, and um, hey, hey, happy Sabbath, and it'll be Psalms 3, if y'all can sing, say lie with me when I sing it, on the first song. Silence. <laughs> you say it now. Say it say it Say it la, 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 say it la. No, how hard they have troubled me. Many are they that rise up against me. Many that say, of my soul. There's no help for human God. Say la, 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 say la. Oh Lord, hardship for me, my glory. Lift up my head, I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out, his holy heat. Say la, say la, say la, say la, 
say la say la say la say la lay me down and slip away again for the lord sustain me i will not be afraid of ten thousand people have set themselves against me. Say la, 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 oh Lord, save me, oh my God, thou hast spied my enemies upon the tree. Thou has broken teeth, ungodly, ungodly. Say la, 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 say la. Salvation belongs unto the Lord. Thy blessing is upon thy people. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Thy blessing is upon thy people. Say la, say la, say la, say la, say la, say la. Thank you. So, um, the next one is um, <laughs> next one is Pharaoh. Let my people go. So y'all sing Pharaoh with me. Let my people go. Okay. <laughs> Monkey. Pharaoh, let my people go. Pharaoh, let my people go. Pharaoh, let my people go. When Israel went out of Egypt, the house of Jacob. From people of strange languages, Judah was his sanctuary, and Israel is beyond Pharaoh. Let my people go, Pharaoh. Let my people go. The sea saw it and fled. And Jordan was driven back. The mouth to skip thy red. The hill thy land. Pharaoh, let my people go. Pharaoh, let my people go. Oh, thou see thy friend, thou Jordan, thou driven back to the mountain. You skip thy rain, you little hill, thy land. Pharaoh, let my people go. Pharaoh, let my people go. Tremble the earth at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of God. Oh, Jacob, which turned the rock in standing water, the flint unto the fountain of water. Pharaoh, let my people go. 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 Tremble the earth at the presence of the Lord, 
at the presence of God, of Jacob, which turned the rock in standing water, the flint of two, the fountain of water, Pharaoh, let my people go, Pharaoh, let my people go. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, brothers and sisters, I hope you don't mind giving Sister Trina another round of applause. When I said she did that, I probably changed, or speaking too fast, let me slow down. I probably told my age, because I don't know if they be using that anymore. She did that. If y'all don't know, she did that, brothers and sisters, because she told me before we started that she'd been working on doing songs that contain the script, and I keep i just be honest with you. My wife sings in the choir down in L.A., and um, she listened to gospel music all week long. And I'm like, why is you? It's to the point after 20 years, you're like, you know darn well none of these people is doing nothing that the Most High is talking about. But yet, you listen to these songs, and um, I'm going to make sure I show it to her. Maybe she, you know, seeing somebody else put it into action, it'll give them some determination to step their game up. And uh, that's just me coming from somebody that don't know how to sing at all, but <laughs> listening to it, I know how to listen to music and it's really important to uh, give praise to the Lord. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, first off, I'd like to say grace, peace, and mercy from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Peace to everybody that made it here safely to class today. Um, peace to everybody that's blessed to stream online today. Um, my name is Brother Jason. It's my first time coming out here to Dallas. It's a blessing to come out here and stand in front of the Lord's people. And um, I, was, I was told a few people, I told Hector I wasn't going to mention it. I, uh, I got a request to come out here before, but my father was ill, so I couldn't leave him like he was. So if it wasn't for that, I would have came out here and, uh, you know, um, enjoyed the blessing of coming out here and standing in front of y'all and, and, and keeping the Sabbath with y'all. With that being said, we're going to go ahead and get started with today's lesson. The title of today's lesson is The Righteous Are Bold as a Lion. The Righteous Are Bold as a Lion. You guys know what bold mean? Anybody, I, I like to ask, you know, I've been, you know, accused of getting more interactive. I don't, you know, that's just, you know, nobody wants to stand up here and think somebody know what, what you're talking about. We probably know examples of boldness, but can somebody, I'm gonna ask one of the youngsters in here. These, uh, Daryl, these are your sons right here, and I know that's a Jedediah boy right there, right? Y'all know what bold mean? Well, come on, you gonna tell us? <laughs> if you don't know, it's all good too, because that's why we're here. That's an example of being bold, but what does bold mean? Courageous, yeah, that's a part of it, being courageous. I ain't going to put them on the spot no more longer. To be bold means to take risk, brothers and sisters. Be wi being willing to take a what? A risk. So the righteous are bold as a lion. I probably got a, I, I only spoke about a lion because the, the title of the lesson is from the last scripture in the lesson, Proverbs 28 and 1. We're not going to read it till the end. And that's when I, of course, mentioned something about the lion. I'm going to go ahead and since Brother Jedediah got the lion up on the screen, do we need to really, we know what it means when it says to be bold as a lion, right? Lions take down what? Hippos, rhinos, giraffes. At the at elephants, at the risk of what? Death. Because they know if they don't eat and don't go get it for themselves, nobody else is going to do it for them. So the Lord is mentally trying to tell us 
hey, I need you to be bold like that. And we should know by now, being decent Bible students, that to be righteous means to do what? We, you know, the only standard for being righteous in the Bible is what? Keeping the law, statutes, and commandments, right? Being holy as he as, as he is holy, right? And because we know righteousness on our own cannot be achieved because most of us have already failed and missed the mark. I, that was a... Uh, when Mr. Mark came up, bro. No, that was at the airport talking to a, a guy when I got off the airport. I asked him, what does sin mean? He said, missing the mark. I said, I can miss the mark at work. Got to be more to it than that. But that's a, another conversation. So we're going to get started. The title, once, once again, is The Righteous Are As Bold. Well, don't say as bold. The Righteous Are Bold As a Lion. We're going to start in Ecclesiastes. We're going to read one verse right here. When you get there, my brother, go ahead who is as the wise man, and who knoweth the interpretation of a thing. A man's wisdom maketh his face to shine, and the boldness of his face shall be changed. One more time, Brother Hector. Who is as the wise man, and who knoweth the interpretation of a thing. A man's wisdom maketh his face to shine, and the boldness of his face shall be changed. I mean, that's saying a few things there, right? Who is as the wise man? Uh, hopefully... One of us can say we as the wise man, right? And who knoweth the interpretation of a thing? Brother Hector, you think you know a few things in the Bible? You brothers and sisters, y'all know the interpretation of a thing, right? God requires us to know things. That's why we got this big old book here, right? Because he has things that he has explained to us, and he wants us to get what it is he's telling us and explaining it to us, right? Who can... Who knoweth the interpretation of a thing? A man's wisdom make his what? It says his face to shine. Is it talking about literally? Hey, we can debate or talk about that another time, right? But we know as we get down to the end, it says here, and the boldness of his what? Face. His face shall change, right? When you deal with the Lord, you're supposed to be a little bit more bolder than you was when you didn't know nothing. Would you agree? And that's the angle I'm going to come from in the lesson, brothers and sisters, is to show that it's all kinds of people that we probably know, or you might have been one yourself that considers yourself to be a bold individual. I know quite a few on all kinds of different uh, levels and, and spectrums, right? I knew people out in the street that was more bolder than me. I'm not about to go pull a gun and, well, I'm accused for using a lot of slang. I was going to say blow somebody's noodles out. Blow somebody brains out. I was raised better than that. And when I say I'm not going to do that, I'm not going to do that over a hood, over a street that don't belong to me, over some money, over doing some wicked venture. I'm not going to kill somebody. I wasn't bold enough to do them things. I remember the first time that I thought I was and I couldn't do it. I'll just keep it real with you. I had the heat on me and everything. I'm in Hollywood, and I'm like, yeah, who I'm going to get? You get to looking out there, who you going to rob? See, y'all ain't probably never been there. Maybe somebody been in here before like that. See, that's a crossroads for me. Probably had I did something that night, there's no telling if I would have got to where I'm at right now. But I'll be honest with you, I could not do it, bring myself to draw down on somebody and take them for everything that they got or to threaten them and tell them, I'm going to kill you or I'm going to shoot you if you don't, what, give me, give, me, give me whatever that is I think you got, right? Jewelry, whatever, right? But I'm sure we all know somebody that has been bold enough to do that, right? That's an example of boldness, right? I'm here to tell y'all that's not the type of boldness that the Lord is looking for. It's not, he's not looking for that type of boldness, brothers and sisters, because the only boldness that we need to have is that we need to be bold to do his will, brothers and sisters, because that's the major challenge you have in the world. Is you bold enough to do what God say? And it's one thing to keep the commandments, brothers and sisters. That ain't all he asked us to do. And we're going to see that as we go through the lesson. We're going to focus on one individual, which is Peter. We only going to look at Peter, brothers and sisters, and Lord willing, we'll learn something about what boldness looks like. And we'll question ourselves and look inward and realize that we wouldn't even bold as Peter when he was walking with Jesus. We're not that bold right now. And Peter was bold when he was with Jesus, but he wasn't bold as a lion, brothers and sisters. 
but we'll get into it. Let's go further. We're going to go. I got a couple of more scriptures here. We're going to go to Luke 12. Luke 12. It's not on the lesson. We're going to go to Luke 12. Luke chapter 12, and then we're going to pick it up at 42. We're going to read through 42, from 42 through 48. Luke chapter 12. Because one thing we find in that scripture that we read about boldness, it said uh, wisdom. I'm going to read it. I can get that back there quick enough. Wisdom make if his face to shine. Wisdom make the boldness of your face change, right? It's a scripture in the Bible where Paul said, when I was a child, I spoke as a what? When I became a man, I did what? That you put away childish things and you start dealing with things, right? That's because of wisdom, brothers and sisters. A man know that he should know that once I have kids, I can't live like I was before if I didn't have no job, if all I did was sit home and play video games all day. Um, Y'all get the point I'm making, right? That's childish things, right? Not saying nothing wrong with playing video games, but playing video games instead of looking for a job and you got mouths to feed, that's a problem. You shouldn't be, you know, you need to, you need to grow up. You need to have more wisdom to understand that I got to be about more than this. So Luke chapter 12, we're going to pick it up at verse 42 because it's really our understanding of God is what's going to propel us to being bold, brothers and sisters. The more you know, the more you gonna, you should be doing for God because you got a choice. God can show you a lot and you can do what? Not a lot with it. That's up to you and I to do something with what God gives to us, brothers and sisters. We're going to see that. And the Lord make it plain. Because we have to get from the point to where these scriptures that we read, when we read them, they hold a lot more weight than we give them, brothers and sisters. A lot more weight. We're going to see it. Luke chapter 12, pick it up at verse 42, brother Hector, when you get there. Go ahead. Let's see who this is talking. And the Lord said, who then is that faithful and wise steward? whom his Lord shall make ruler over his household to give them their portion of meat in due season. So we read from the top, it says, the Lord said, we know it's talking about Christ here. We in the New Testament, in the book of Luke. The Lord said, who then is a faithful and wise steward? See, you can't be faithful and foolish. It's impossible, sis. Sisters and brothers, it's impossible to be faithful and foolish. You can be faithful maybe and ignorant. Because foolishness really is, you know to do good, but, well, I don't even want to say that because this is a place in Hosea where it says, my people, we know the scripture where it says, the people, my people perish for a lack of knowledge, right? Then it says, it goes on to say there, it says, it's talking about Israel. My people are wise to do good, but to do, or excuse me, wise to do evil, but to do good, they what? They know not. My people are wise to do evil, but to do good they know not, it says in the Bible. So you, it's really like saying Israel sometimes just don't even know the right path they're supposed to be on. But at the end of the day, I'm going to go back and make the original statement that I made. That is, who then is a faithful and wise steward? That's what the Lord is looking for, Hector. He's looking for that combination right there. Keep going, verse 43. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Find doing what? Being what? Wise and what? Faithful, Faithful. brothers and sisters. That's what he want to see when he come back. Keep going. Of a truth, I say unto you, that he will make him ruler over all that he hath. But if, and if that servant say in his heart, my Lord delay his coming, and shall begin to be his manservants and maiden, to eat and drink, and to be drunken, then... The Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him, and at that hour when he is not aware, and will cut him in sunder, and will appoint him his portion with the unbeliever. Who the Lord talking to? A believer, huh? Then I'm going to set you with an unbeliever, right? If you don't be wise and faithful when I come back, and you talking reckless, and you back drinking and getting loaded, and you done 
strayed from what I told you. But keep going, verse 46. Oh, we read 47. Down. 47, go ahead. And that servant which knew his Lord's will. Say it again, my brother. And that servant which knew his Lord's will. One more time, brother Hector. That servant that what? Which knew his Lord's will. Yeah, not a Lord's will, right? Keep going. And pretended no, and no, prepared no. not himself. One more time and did what? And prepared not himself. Uh-uh, he didn't prepare himself. Keep going. Neither did according to his will. Shall be beaten with many stripes. Come on. But he that knew it not and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. One more time. But he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes, meaning he didn't load, know the Lord's will, huh? He shall be beaten with few stripes, but what? For unto whomsoever much is given of him shall be much required. And to whom men have committed much of him, they will ask the more. Okay, so I read this really just to get to this one place where it says, for unto whomsoever much is what? Yeah. Given, much is required. And if you're serving the Lord right now and you don't realize, or if you're not, at, it's, let, let, I'm going to put it this way. If you at a level with the Lord and he, had, you know, well, man, I, you know, I'm just now starting. I'm just getting into this. It's possible one of y'all is in that position right now, right? But if you've progressed beyond that and the Lord has given you some knowledge, given you some wisdom, do you see the end of what that scripture is saying? Much is what, brother? Required. Much is required. Not the opposite, huh? Because the more you know, and I know I'm, I'm not speaking no rocket science, so I'm telling y'all something y'all don't know. But we need to really realize, brothers and sisters, the more you know, the more the Lord is going to expect of us, brothers and sisters. You can't stay in the same lane with the most high. Now, obviously, if for a month, a couple of years, I ain't going to even say a year. because I really went from a couple of months to a couple of years. That's too long. I'm just giving examples. Let's say for a year, you know, you at a certain level. After a year, you should know more than you did the year before. Would you agree? Okay, and as you progress in walking with the Most High, He's going to require more of you because that wisdom and that boldness is what's going to make your what? Your foundation right to where you can step out there and do things for the Lord. And that's really what God wants. That's really God's will, brothers and sisters. When I say this more than us just keeping the commandments, because we know that's required of us. Remember, it's a scripture that says, and I'm probably going to butcher it because I can't think exactly how it's written right now. But it basically says, I'm, I, I'll find it later if, 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 if need be. The Lord says, oh, here it is. He say that serving God and keeping the commandments is your what? Reasonable service, it says, brothers and sisters. We can't be God's people and be trifling, can we? That's a no-brainer that we got to be better than the world, right? But is that just the cap on things right there? No, that ain't the cap because we're supposed to go out here and push this gospel. That's why we out here. That's why we got an IOG out here. That's why we got the J out here. That's why we got... I mentioned a few of y'all, L.A. started as the second class. Elijah knew the vision from the Lord. We trying to go from 15 to 30 to 45 to 50, whatever it's going to be, the Lord going to allow us to do, because that is his will, brothers and sisters. And we have to be bold enough. And obviously, Elijah is bold enough to do it, isn't he? I'm sure some people that didn't believe in him that he could go from Gary to where we at now, to where we got classes right now, simultaneously on the Sabbath, God's people have an understanding and serving him right now. It seemed like a little thing when you come into the truth and it's like, wow, like these people really doing it. It was not always like this, brothers and sisters. We didn't always have a live stream. We didn't always have YouTube. You know what I mean? And I don't want to get off in all of that. I'm going to run it back. To whom much is given, much is required. Let's see what God has given to us. Let's go to Mark 4 and 11, and then we'll get into the lesson. Because this is the lesson, but we'll get into what I, the scriptures that I had. Because I said we was going to focus on Peter. Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4, and then we're going to pick it up at verse 11. Mark chapter 4. And I'm not giving no background. I'm kind of assuming that y'all know. This is a time when Jesus was giving them parables and they really didn't know the interpretation. They had to come and holler at him. If we read verse 10, which we not, I'll read it. This, it says, when Jesus was alone, they that were about him with the 12 asked him of that parable. Like, 
Man, Lord, like, you got to run that back. I don't know what the heck you talking about. You got to break that down for me. So we read in Ecclesiastes, it says a wise man, what? He know the interpretation of a thing. The disciples didn't have it like that all the time. But since they had Jesus with them, they didn't have to try and figure it out. Christ told them what time it was and what he meant. And we're going to read that right here. Verse 11, that he is Jesus Go ahead, Brother Hector. And he said unto them, Unto you is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables. One more time, Brother Hector. And he said unto them, right? Go ahead. Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables. So is he saying talking just to them? Literally, he was just talking to them at the time, right? We read in this scripture now. Is he talking to us too? It's given unto you to know the what? Mysteries of God. And then that are on the what? Without means on the outside, right? It says, but unto them that are without or on the outside, all these things are done in parables. And we really not here to get off into that. The bottom line is we was all on the outside at one time with God, weren't we? Maybe not all of us because we got a few seeds that's growing up in this truth. Y'all growing up on the inside. Y'all not growing up on the outside like your parents did or your uncle or whoever it is that's your um, elder in your life that came into the truth. We didn't have, we didn't come on, we didn't grow up on the inside. So it's given unto you to know the mysteries of God. That's why we got y'all sitting here. So when y'all get teenage years, early 20s, like a few brothers and sisters in here is, or early 30s, y'all be knowing what God expect of his people. One more time, brother, and then we'll leave here and go on. And he said unto them, unto you is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables. It's given unto you, it's given unto us. If you don't understand that, brothers and sisters, that everybody is not going to know the mysteries of God, brothers and sisters. And I don't need to get into a, 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 do a checklist and go through here and say, how many mysteries of God do we know, right? We know a lot, don't we? Give me an example of one, or should I give an example of one that's considered a mystery of God? Most people didn't know that the Godhead was made up of two members, right? That's a mystery of God, right? Until Christ came and glorified the Father and said, hey, I'm the Son. But I've been dwelling with him the whole time. Nobody knew that, right? We know that the Holy Spirit is not God, huh? We know that's an angel, the spirit of truth, the comforter, Gabriel. That's a mystery that all modern churches have, have a clue. They bowing down to something that ain't God or thinking that it's God. Um, what's another mystery, right? Three heavens. We can go on and on and on, right? But there's even more ones that are on a lower level, right? Yeah. Just the fact that God, I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to let the cat out the bag right now, brothers and sisters. When them brothers and sisters, when the disciples was walking with Jesus, they didn't think Jesus was never going to leave, brothers and sisters. They didn't know. They, they didn't know. <laughs> they didn't know. They didn't know that he was basically little by little saying, like, like, I'm about to leave. I'm gone. Deuces. And it's going to be on y'all now. They, they didn't want to accept that. And who wouldn't want to accept that as much good as Jesus was doing? As much good as Jesus was doing, that's like if you hanging around. I'm not, I guess, doing too good on the examples today. Give me somebody that got it going on. And if you had a chance to hang out with them and you didn't have to pay for anything, everything was already done, you know, before you get there, the bed is made. And, um, and I'm speaking hypothetically, right? I don't think Jesus was making the bed for the disciples, right? But we know that they didn't want or need for anything. Do we, or, or do we have understanding to know that? Jesus went and got told them, Told, I don't know if it was Peter or one of the disciples. He told him to get money out of a fish, right, to pay taxes, right? If we was around somebody like that, I would want that person around too, right? Y'all get my point. What I'm saying is, brothers and sisters, they didn't understand that. They didn't have that understanding. And so we have to realize that we live in far removed from them days, and we're going to see a little bit in the lesson, 
And we're going to see it right here in this next scripture that we go into that they didn't understand that as much as this gospel is about Christ, it's really about who? Us, brothers and sisters. Because the gospel means what? The what? The good news, right? The good news of God coming to set a kingdom up on earth, right? He's going to get rid of all evildoers. He's going to shut down all these wicked kingdoms on earth. That's the gospel we preach. That's what we pray to the Lord when we pray the Lord's Prayer, right? And we know repentance and all of that is a part of it as well. But the first thing is, the good news is, God got something to say about what's going on in this world. He's aware of all the wickedness. He's aware of people being mistreated. And he's saying, I'm going to come and set it up. And that stuff not going to go on no more in my kingdom. That's the good news. And God expects us to push that strong, brothers and sisters. And it's going to come a time when we're going to have to be bold in order to push that message out because the world don't want to hear it. And I, when I say the world, I'm just not talking about, you know, the people outside. I'm talking about the powers that be, right? They want to keep things, the status quo, the way they are right now. They got that, they, they, they the haves and we the what? And they want to keep it like that. And they're going to do more to show that as time goes on, if they need to do it any more than what it's already been done, right? Let's go further. Let's go to Matthew 16 now. Matthew 16, and we're going to pick it up. This is what I was saying. We're going to just focus on Peter. One individual. Matthew chapter 16, and then we're going to pick it up at verse 13. Matthew 16, verse 13. Pay attention again, brothers and sisters, please. And I'm not saying it like my lessons is so heck of a that you need to pay attention. I, I think it's something we overlook when we read, be reading this Bible. Like I said, we can't just read it off the pages no more. It got to have some weight, brothers and sisters. Okay, verse 13. Go ahead, Brother Hector. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? I mean, that's a pretty simple question. Who would think that Jesus had to ask his own brothers that he was with? Because if you really knew what time it was, this is almost around the time he's going to be killed. I don't want to put a particular time stamp on it, but he done been with him a couple of years now. And he asked the disciples, right? Whom do men say that I am or the son of man am? Verse 14. And they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah's, or one of the prophets. And he said unto them, but whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto them, blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Y'all understanding what just took place right there, brothers and sisters? That was that pay attention I'm talking about. He said, who do men say I am? They said, some say you John the Baptist. Some say you Elijah. Some say you Jeremiah, Jesus, or one of the other prophets. He said unto them, but I ain't asked you. I did ask you who do men say I am, but who do you say that I am, right? That's what he asked. Thank you. But who do you? But whom say ye that I am? Talking to the disciples. Let's see who spoke up first. Go ahead. And Jesus answered. and no, 16. I'm sorry. Oh, verse 16. 16. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Pay attention to Jesus' answer here, brothers and sisters. This is what I came here for. Go ahead. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee but my father which is in heaven. See, you didn't learn that in college is what he's telling them. I'm just trying to give y'all examples. You didn't go to no regular church and figure that out. At that time, was, any, was there a Christian church at this time? No, there wasn't no Christian church, right? There wasn't no Baptist church, right? For Peter to be Oh, we know about Jesus, right? Jesus hadn't even be, fulfilled his whole ministry yet, right? He hadn't even gone through his passion yet, right? The point being is this, brothers and sisters, when it says, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, that means he didn't come up with that on his own, right? God actually did what? He showed it to him. He revealed it to him. 
And if we downplay that, brothers and sisters, that you being here today, understanding that you what? I got to I got to repent from my past life. I got to turn to God and be about his business since I know I'm his people now. And I know my people have transgressed and have fallen way short of the standard that God has set for us. God is so upset with us. Even to this day, he angry with us. And I understand I got other things that I need to do. And the point I was making is flesh and blood have not what? That ain't been revealed to us. We didn't go to school and learn that. We didn't go to anybody in our family. Well, we're not going to learn about that on TV, is we? Unless we, I know we're Jedediah. I told him I seen Elijah on TV, so that's kind of the exception, right? <laughs> but, but before Elijah was on TV, and I'm going to say even, wow, before YouTube and before Elijah was on TV and any other brothers that was pushing this truth, would you learn that on TV? And I know that X's out all the youngsters in here because that was many moons ago. Point being is, okay, let me make it. Who, who look at cable in here? I mean, got like a, oh, give me some, brother, brother, my brother. Yeah, what you look at on cable? What channel? What's your favorite channel? A and E. Hey, that's the business, right? Is you gonna learn about who the Christ is on A and E? Nah, you're not. You gonna learn you Israel on A and E? There's people that sit on TV and spend hours and hours looking at television all day long, don't they? They never gonna run across none of this truth, huh? You go. God is gonna have to reveal it to to you, and more than likely, the common thread that we all have amongst us is that we did what? We came out from among what? Traditional church, right? Traditional church teachings, right? We was reading the Bible and like, he up there lying. Or, that ain't what the Bible say. Or, man, he ain't gonna read no more of the scriptures than that. I'm gonna ask him a question. He gonna say something the opposite of what I'm reading. We've all seek God out and asked him to show us, like Brother Hector said. He said, I had to tell God, like, like I want the truth, Lord. Like, I want you to give it to me. However it's going to come, that's all I want. And when you put yourself out there with God and he know you sincere about that, he is going to reveal it to you, brothers and sisters. And I say that because I don't know everybody in here. Somebody might be coming up in here and they don't have that experience. But the majority of us, if you, what, that's what led you to come to class the first time you came or eventually from some seed or somebody inviting you to class and they were telling you, you need to come check us out. Your church probably, I'm telling y'all, they ain't teaching what we teaching. And then you come and then you realize that God have revealed his truth to men, which I'm a man, there's men out here, it's, women is a part of men that have understanding of his word and are able to interpret these things and rightly divide the word to give us the understanding we need. Not man's wisdom, though, right? Off the pages of the book. So I know we didn't finish there. I'm going to read verse 17 because that's going to be the probably the realest thing I would say in the lesson is understanding, brothers and sisters, that we cannot downplay that God have revealed this to us. So obviously, did he reveal it to us just for us? To get salvation? Nah, that's the smart whoever said that. No better. It ain't just for us to get salvation. It's for as many as will hear and do, right? His commandments, right? And it's going to take somebody to get that word out there, brothers and sisters. And I know everybody ain't called to be a teacher. I know everybody ain't called to witness and prophesy. But on the individual scale, you can tell somebody at your work about your God. You can tell somebody in your family about God. You can tell your friend, you know, regardless of what they're thinking about you about God, and you can tell some strangers about the Most High, brothers and sisters. And that's what it's going to take for us to be in line with God's will because it's going to take some boldness, brothers and sisters. Who was that that I met that said I was an invert? Was that you, Hector? In introvert, sorry, not invert. <laughs> introvert. Somebody told me they was an introvert here. I think it was uh, Brody. What's brother name that start with the M again? Matisse. You told me you was an introvert. Was no? 
Somebody told me, you know what? I'm going back to this conversation I had at the airport. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, nah, don't be one. The guy I met at the airport told me he was an introvert. He was saying like, okay, I met this guy. I got off the plane just to tell y'all. He seen me with the Bible. He waited. He was waiting for me when I got off the plane. Get off the plane. He just like, you know, set it off. Like, you know, I want to introduce myself to you. I uh, seen you with the Bible. I just came from L.A. like you. We were out here teaching Muslims, he said, about Christ. I was like, wow. <laughs> Shoot. Have any of us taught any Muslims about Christ? I mean, actually like, okay, tomorrow, y'all, we're going to meet here, and then we're going to drive to the mosque, and we're going to tell them about that we the children of Israel, and we're going to break it down to them about the Most High. We ain't there, huh? You understand what I'm talking about? So that guy was telling me he was an introvert. He was like, only God can build me. Only God's word and knowing about God give me the confidence, boldness. I didn't even tell him. I think I did tell him. I said, what you're talking about is what I'm talking about, that we need to be that bold, brothers and sisters. And he don't even got all the truth. He got the truth, which is Christ, but he don't have the truth, which is all of, Christ, all of Christ's words and having an understanding of his words. So I'll read it again, verse 17. Introvert is not going to be an excuse for getting his word, not getting his word out, brothers and sisters. I don't like talking to people. Uh, that ain't my thing. <laughs> We're going to see. It probably wasn't a Peter thing either. And maybe it was, but we're going to see that they didn't understand what the whole package deal was with this guy. I'm going to read 17, and then you can hit it, brother uh, Hector. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona. For flesh and blood have not revealed unto you who I am, but my Father which is in heaven. Go ahead. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt lose on earth shall be loose in heaven. The charge of Then he charged his disciples that should tell no man that this was Jesus the Christ. 21 more times, because they ain't paying attention, and I'm just playing. Go ahead, verse 20. Then charged he his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. I mean, think about that. Think about it. They, Jesus asked him, who am I? He like, yeah, you're right. His father done showed that to you. But don't go tell nobody. Because it wasn't time, brothers and sisters. See, that was the J-O-B after the fact, and they didn't realize. But that's just a nugget as we go through. Verse 21, then what Jesus was on after that. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. So after this exchange with them, asking them who he is, it says from that time forth, he began to show his disciples, hey, I'm going to go to Jerusalem. They're going to do me wrong, and they're going to kill me. And then, But I'm going to raise the third day. It says he started trying to beat that in their head, right? From that time forth began Jesus to show his disciples, right? How he showed them by telling them, right, this is what's going to happen to me. Let's see what Peter say, verse 22. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, be be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. One more time, Brother Hector. The, then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. So Peter checking Christ. How many of y'all understand that he literally had enough nerve to check Christ on something Christ was saying? After, I mean, I don't know about y'all, but if I walk around for three years, see a man raise a man from the dead, See somebody heal somebody that been laid on the ground, and everybody know they've been laid on the ground their whole life. Bring damsels back to life. Uh, feed 5,000, right? With a five-piece dinner, right? I said three-piece before, but it was actually five fishes, right? That's close we're going to get to a five-piece, right? Would you have the nerve to tell him, when he telling you, they going to kill me? I'm going to go up here, and I'm letting you know, I'm preparing y'all so y'all get it in your head, that I'm going to go up to Jerusalem, and they're going to be on my head. It's coming time to time for them to kill me. 
Now, if you really love somebody, <laughs> you probably say what Peter said, right? And we know Peter loved Jesus. One more time, verse 22, 22. my brother, verse Hector. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. But he, but he turned and said unto, the, unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan, thou art an offense unto me. For thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. I mean, I'm, if we keep reading, I'm pretty sure Peter didn't add, open his mouth no more that day, huh? Get thee behind me, Satan, to tell the homie that? Get behind me, devil? Boy, you don't know what you're talking about. You savor the things of men. He had to be talking to him like that, right? You worried about men. You ain't worried about what God is talking what? About? I done told you they got. Now you can think what you want to think, right? It's basically what Peter is, or what Jesus is telling Peter, brothers and sisters. And he had, I'm sure when he told him that he was like, I'm going to go to Jerusalem. And when I get up there, they're going to kill me, bro. <laughs> Pretty much. I'm sure he told it with a little more emotion than that. And I'm sure Peter, when he rebuked him, said, Ain't nobody going to do nothing to you. What you mean? I don't think so. Not on my watch. Let's go further. Let's go to Luke 22. Luke 22, verses 31 through 34. Luke 22, verses 31 through 34. So we just read... <laughs> Jesus had to bang on Peter and call him a devil, right? Tell him to get behind me, man. You know, basically tell him to shut up. Get behind me, right? Let's see what Jesus had to say to him this time after he called him a devil, right? Verse 31, go ahead. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Saint has desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. If we don't know what sift you as wheat mean, we know what that first part is, huh? <laughs> Satan has desire to what? Have you. And do you think, if you think he don't desire to have you, or I, or this brother right here, we in the wrong, like I said, we attending the wrong church, brothers and sisters, because we're going to be letting it be known that the target is on our back. But he's letting it be known to Peter that devil really want to, Destroy you, bro. He want to make you make, no, make, make you make nothing out of you. Turn you into nothing. The Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan have desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. Verse 32. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith faileth not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Wait, wait, wait. You, the brother wasn't converted yet after working? Oh, excuse me. Yeah, I guess you could say that. Working and walking three years with Jesus? Peter wasn't converted yet. That's what we're reading, right? He said, when you be converted, oh, excuse me. First he said, I pray that your faith don't fail you. Right? He's looking for faithful and wise servants or stewards, it said, right? But I pray for thee that your faith does not fail. And if your faith don't fail, when you are what? Converted? Man, strengthen your brethren. Verse 33. And he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee, both into prison and to death. You see how Peter talking, y'all? I mean, there's somebody kind of bold in the Bible, wouldn't you say? Really to take some risk according to what's coming off his lips, huh? One more time, Brother Hector, what did what Peter say? And he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee, both into prison and to death. Verse 34. And he said, I tell thee, Peter. The cock shall not crow this day before thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. One more time. And he said what? And he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day before that thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. He said, Peter, you ain't down like that. I'm telling you, you ain't down like that. I'm sure Peter, boy, didn't like that. But we're going to stop right there, I believe. Let's go further. Let's go to John 18. John 18. And we're going to read 1 through 11. I don't know what the lesson says, but we're going to read 1 through 11. Luke 22, we just read, 31 through 34. 
So we're going to fast forward all the way from that point we were just in. I mentioned to you when Jesus started telling them about really telling them that they're going to kill me and they're going to do me in and they're going to hurt me real bad. That was towards the end of his three-year ministry. And now we're going to fast forward all the way to the night of the event. We already read a little bit. This was kind of leading up what we read in Luke 22 when, you know, Jesus is talking to Peter. He's like, man, I'm right or die. I'm ready to go to prison or death after he already told him something about himself already, right? We had read that already, right? Matthew, did I say Matthew? John. John, John 18, verse 1. This is when they went to the Mount of Olives here. John 18, verse 1. Go ahead, my brother. When Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over the brook Sidron, when, where was a garden into thee, which he entered and his disciples. So this is Passover night. This is after the Passover. When Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over the book, over the brook Kedron, where was a garden into which he entered and his disciples. Verse two. And Judas also, which betrayed him, knew the place for Jesus oftentimes resort there thither with his disciples. Come on. Judas then, having received a band of men and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, cometh thither in lanterns and torches and weapons. Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that should come upon him, went forth and said unto them, whom, whom seek ye? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said that unto them, I am he. And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. You see the Lord bow, he ain't run, huh? Verse 6. As soon then as he said unto them, I am he, they went backwards and fell to the ground. Then asked he them again, whom seek ye? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. If therefore ye seek me, let these go their way. Okay, so a few of the disciples was there. Verse 9, go ahead. That, they, that the saying might be fulfilled which he spake. Of them which thou gavest me, I, have I lost none. Verse 10, then what? Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and smote the high priest's servant, and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Then said Jesus unto Peter, Put, thy, put up thy sword into thy sheath. The cup which thy father hath given me, shall I not drink it? So we seeing that not only Peter talking boldly, he was bold, wasn't he? Real bold, wasn't he? You ever done cut somebody's ear off? Probably pretty hard to cut somebody's ear off, wouldn't you say? That lets you know he was swinging for something else, brothers and sisters. He wasn't swinging for no ear, I guarantee you that. Somebody moved out the way and ducked and got hit, and that's how that ear got cut off the side of his head. I'm guessing. I can't say with 100% of certainty, but I ain't never known nobody pull out a knife and try and cut somebody's ear off. Point being, brothers and sisters, I made the statement already that before, we already read that Jesus told Peter, you, when you convert, meaning you ain't even converted, you're going to deny that you know me. But yet, Peter was bold, wasn't he? None of us have come close to doing nothing like this for God, right? Obviously, Jesus ain't coming back down here on earth again to be arrested and needing one of us to try and help him in that situation, or going to need one of us to try and help him in that situation. Would you agree? In other words, my point, I'm, I mentioned all that to say, we're not going to have that opportunity to begin with, let alone not being able to do it, right? But my point being is, in our walk with God, have we ever, ever been that bold to where you done heard somebody talking reckless about Christ? You done heard somebody talking about us not being Israel and saying we just a bunch of you know what, I ain't going to say it. Have you ever been, have you been in a heated exchange to where you came close to pulling out a weapon and hurting somebody for talking bad about God or, 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 or getting ready to do something to him? Or like I said, you were not getting ready to do something to him. <laughs> getting ready to do something and say something real bad about him. 
None of us have been in that position, huh? We probably had some people talk bad about our class. Y'all in the cult might be frustrated, might make you upset, whatever it is, right? You've never gotten the emotion stirred up enough to where, do you read what we just read right now? That they came to arrest Jesus. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it, smote the high priest's servant, and cut off his ear, right? After Jesus already told Simon Peter what? We read it when we started, didn't we? What did he tell Simon Peter? Do y'all remember what he told him? When he, was, when he told him, he said, ain't nobody going to do nothing to you. He said, get behind me, Satan. You savor us the things of men. Peter's still savoring the things of men right now, right? He ain't getting it. He's not understanding this got to be. It's got to be, Peter. So much so that I'm pretty sure. I don't know. Let's just say, for instance, we know Jesus and God. We just read it. Jesus said he, it said he knew everything. Did he really know like that? Peter finna cut this fool ear off. And I'm going to have to put it back on. That's unnecessary, wouldn't you think? It would have been better for Peter just to what? Already had knew what time it was and be like, but think about it. We thinking we it's easy for us to play Monday morning quarterback and look at the game after it happened, right? In real time, you've been walking with your brother or your sister for three years, and they about to arrest them, and they got weapons and stuff, and you down. You done told them you down. I go to jail. I die for you. Nobody gonna do nothing to you while I'm with you. You might get froggy like that, huh? For your mama or your daddy or your brother or your sister. It could happen, right? Unfortunately, in this instant that we're reading about right here, remember I told y'all, this is not the type of boldness that God is looking for, brothers and sisters. Do God need us to protect him? And he ain't going to never need us to defend him, brothers and sisters. It's up to us to do what? Defend the faith, brothers and sisters. That's our job, not to defend Christ, to defend the faith, to be the light in this dark, cold world, brothers and sisters, to let it be known that the most high still reigneth. And he going to come and deal with y'all regardless of what things look like. Let's go further. So let's go um, to Mark 14. Mark 14. So they arrested Jesus. Let's see what happened when they went to court. Mark 14. Most of us know he already told Peter what he's going to do, huh? Sometimes you just got to see it to believe it. If y'all been with one of y'all people, somebody sock your mama, I'm sure y'all going to sock them back, right? Right? Later on, the police got your mama and beating her up and getting ready to do something to her. What you going to do then? You going to break her out of jail? They whoop on her so bad, you realize they're going to do you the same way? Like I gave an example last week. It's easy for me to say, Hector, he walking outside. I see somebody on Hector. It's easy for me to jump in the mix and, you know, either be a peacemaker, try and calm the scene down. If the cat don't want to <laughs> calm down, we probably have to. Uh, let me use my correct words, we probably have to restrain him, and it might have to escalate even beyond that, right? If it's 30 people jumping on Hector, right now, we go outside, one of the brothers and sisters getting jumped on by 30 people. That's going to change the situation, huh, from two people jumping on Hector, huh? Or three people, or him going head up with somebody, huh? You see? Because that's what we up against, brothers and sisters. The odds are not in our favor. And if you don't know that going in, that's going to be a problem because we are never going to be the majority. We are always, it's going to be times when you look around and you're going to be like, you might, it have been times when it have been uh, back when early in the day before I was really even, I would say fully in the truth. When I was knew we was Israel, but di didn't have, was clueless in a lot of other areas. I was in college. They had Christian groups. They used to have Bible studies. They have whole conversations. It'd be going down. 
You know, I have a couple of brothers that I knew supposedly went to church. Before I look around, ain't nobody but me. They done went on that side with the ones that's kicking against what I'm telling them. My point being is, brothers and sisters, it could be a lonely walk sometimes. A lion don't need a bunch of lions to go out all the time. Right? We've seen them. You've seen them documentaries when things get so bad in the Serengeti in Africa where it's so much drought that the mama lion leave the cubs go out with by herself, don't she? And go take on what? Whatever, huh? Whatever I got to do to feed these babies. But she go by herself, huh? No eyes. The Lord ain't playing when he say the righteous are as bold as a lion. It's going to take that. And that's the extreme I'm going to, right? If we had to be out here preaching by ourselves. And sometimes you find yourself in that position because we know we live in a world where the truth is not readily available. So more than likely, you're going to be the only one that have it or got a hold of it. And others, you know, are going to reject it. And, it's, you know, we just still got to do what's required of us. Mark 14 and 53. It should be 53. Sorry. Mark 14, verse 53. Sorry about that. Mark 14, verse 53. Let's see what body body. Like I, I even said that last week. Really was telling my age. I used to be the one right there. I used to tell people, yeah, he bouty. He bout that. And if I told you somebody's about that, remember I told you, I ain't the I, I already mentioned to you, I don't split noodles, you know what I mean? But I knew some people, more than a few that was that down to do some things. And I done did some bold things before I've even been told he was bold for doing that. But I, I, it's, it's levels to it, right? And we just saw one that was bold enough to cut somebody ear off for running up on Jesus, right? After Jesus told him, hey, man, they're going to kill me. <laughs> you you messing up the plan. But let's see Peter in action again. Go ahead. 53. And they led Jesus away to the high priest. And with him were assembled all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes. I like the way you read that. All, not a little bit. 54. And Peter followed him afar off, even into the palace of the high priest. Oh, and yeah. he sat with the servants and wore himself at the fire. Okay, so Peter followed along after they gaffled Jesus up. Arrest him, excuse me, verse 55. And the chief priest and all the council sought for witness against Jesus to put him to death and found none. Come on. For many bear false witness against him, but their witnesses agreed not together. Come on. And there arose certain and bear fall witness against him, saying, we heard him say, I will destroy this temple that th that is made with hands, and with three days I will build another made without hands. But neither did so their witnesses agreed together. And the high priest stood up in the midst, and asked Jesus, saying, Answer thou nothing? What is it with these witnesses against thee? But he, led, but he held his peace and answered nothing. Again, the high priest asked him and said unto him, Thou art thou the Christ? Art thou the Christ? Keep going. The son of the blessed. And Jesus said, I am. And ye shall see the son of man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. The high priest rent his clothes and saith, We need, what need we any further witnesses? Did you just hear what he said, right? That's what he said. You need any more witnesses? Did you hear what this man just said? I, yeah, I'm the Christ. You shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Verse 64. Ye have heard the blasphemy. What think ye? And they all condemned him to be guilty of death. And some began to spit on him. Oh, it's going down. Come on. And to cover his face and to buffet him. And to say unto him, prophesiest, and the servants did strike him with the palms of their hands. And Peter was beneath the palace, and there cometh one of the maids of the high priest. And when he and she saw Peter warming himself, she looked upon him and said, And thou also was with Jesus of Nazareth? But he denied, saying, I know not, neither understand I what thou sayest. And he went out into the porch. And the cock crew, and the maid saw him again, and began to say to them that stood by, 
this is one of them. And he denied it again a little after. They stood afar by and said again to Peter, Surely thou art one of them. Surely you one of them. Go ahead. For thou art a Galilean, and thy speech agreeth thereto. What Peter do? But he began to curse and to swear, saying, I know not this man of whom you speak. And the second time the, cr the cock crew, and Peter called to mind the word of Jesus said unto him, Before the cock crow twice, thou shalt deny me thrice. And when he sought thereon, he wept. And when he thought thereon, he wept. So my question to you is, Peter wasn't that down, right? He thought he was, huh? It's possible that some of us think we that down. And I'm already telling you, I don't even know if we thinking we that down. Whether we is or we not thinking we that down, one thing for sure, Peter was downer than we is right now. Would you agree? Before he was converted. Because like I said, we ain't do nothing like that. We ain't did nothing like that for God. It's, this lesson I did for the kids, to be perfectly honest with you, right? It's so many examples you can prove of people being bold in the Bible, right? I think I had Daniel and the lions then, right? Caleb, right? When everybody was like, we ain't going fight to fight them giants. You know, it's good for the kids to get them stories, right? Because they're relatable, right? So when I redid the lesson, I said, well, we got to kind of, it was looking too childish. I said, and, you know, the word of God is for everybody. I, just for me, we need to, 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 to bring it for us, right? How, what, what, what boldness is going to be required of us, right? What is going to be required of us? Hit 72, or oh, we read that. We can move on. Let's go to uh, John. John 21. John 21. John 21. Because as I mentioned, Peter cried, it said. He thought about it like, and he just started crying, it said, right? That Jesus told him he wasn't that down. He wasn't trying to hear that though, huh? Because if you think you's down and somebody tell you, bro, you <laughs> laugh at you, right? Not saying Jesus did that, right? But in essence, it's the same thing, right? Boy, please, you ain't there yet. I know you think you is, Peter. I know you, you carry a sword around and I know you'll cut somebody with it. But you ain't ready to die for me. Like you thought you was, right? You ain't ready to get locked up for me. See, that's a different type of boldness, brothers and sisters. But when you understand God's will, you can get there. Um, John 21, we know that Jesus was killed that night where we just le left from. And eventually he was raised from the grave on the third day. We're going to pick it up right there. John 21, verse 1, go ahead. This is probably like the third time, I think, after the disciples has seen him. This is the third time, and I interject a little bit. Go ahead. John 21, verse 1. Go ahead. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, and on this wise showed he himself. There were together Simon Peter and Thomas called Didymus and Nathaniel of Canaan and Galilee and the sons of Zebedee, the two other of the, his disciples. Simon Peter said unto them, I go a fishing. They say unto him, We also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately. And the night, and and that night they caught nothing. But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore. But the disciples knew that it was Jesus, that knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said unto them, Children, have ye any meat? They answered him, No. He said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and you shall find. They cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. Skip down to verse 9. As soon as they were come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid thereon and bread. Jesus said unto them, Bring of the fish which ye have now caught. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land full of great fishes. And hundred and fifty three, and for all there were so many, yet was none, yet was not the net broken. <clears throat> Jesus said unto them, Come and dine. And none of the disciples thrust asked him, 
whom art thou? knowing that it was the Lord. So they know it's Jesus now, right? But before we read, they didn't realize it was him. 13. Jesus then cometh and taketh bread and giveth them and fish likewise. This is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples after that he was risen from the dead. And I'm going to jump in here because it says the third time, because if you have enough understanding, brothers and sisters, of the script or recollection of the script, not so much understanding, the first time that Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that Jesus was alive, they didn't believe what she was talking about. They thought it was a fairy tale. Like she had told them some tale, it says. So that's some homework for y'all. Y'all can go back and look at the lengths that God is going. Remember, we read that Jesus said unto Peter, flesh and blood, not revealing this to you. What Jesus is doing right here, definitely not flesh and blood, brothers and sisters. They getting it for real, for real, brothers and sisters. It's one thing for us to be over here. The scripture says, blessed are those who believe yet have not what? Seen. They saw the Lord, brothers and sisters. So the level of faith that they had to work with after that, I mean, it's basically like, and I, and I am jumping ahead, but just so y'all get where, I, like I said, the angle where I was going, when you know what God's will is, brothers and sisters, you got two choices. You either with it or you not. And you, and I know, like I said, I'm not telling y'all something y'all don't know. I mean, we really have to understand that, brothers and sisters. You either with it or you not. Because when God show you so much and you sit on it, brothers and sisters, you're going to have a problem. We're going to have a problem. <laughs> I'm just telling y'all. We gonna have some problems with this God if we not taking what we've learned, taking what He's given us, and giving it like He did finna tell Peter right now. If we gonna not gonna do it like them, because, and I'm gonna say it after we read this. Go ahead. So He says He showed Himself the third time because He's building a faith, brothers and sisters. I mean, He making it real plain and. Simple. What I mentioned when I did the lesson last time to where I said I got to interject here. If God. The first time they probably thought it was a ghost. huh? If you see your mama, I, I use my mama. I didn't want to use nobody. Else. Well, my mama's still living. My grandmother passed last year. If I see my grandmother for real, for real, see her. You think I'm going to be tripping? Yeah, I'm going to be tripping, huh? I don't care what she do. She could be done cook dinner for me. Here, eat this. Once I eat, like, damn, it tastes like, darn it, it tastes like gr granny food, right? And then she tell me some stuff, right? And then she just disappear and vanish. That's some spooky stuff. I mean, I'm just keeping it real with y'all. We can read these scriptures all we want. A man came back from the grave. Showed up out of nowhere on them the first time while they was inside a room. Isn't that what it said? The doors being closed, then got on and disappeared. This time we seeing they done pulled up to the shore. It say Jesus got a spread laid out there for them. Like we've been to eat tonight, y'all. Like it's real. It's me. I know what's in y'all mind. It ain't settled in that I done came back from the grave like I told y'all I was. Remember, these are people who did not want to see him be killed to begin with. Couldn't fathom that. Couldn't process that. It happened. Now, could you imagine that range of emotion going from, he's gone. I think it's even a place in the Gospels where it says they had went back to business as usual. But go ahead, finish this. So when they what? Verse 15? 15. So when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, Yeah, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lamb. Come on. He saith unto him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, Yeah, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. He says unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he had said, him the third time, lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things, thou 
know is that I love thee. Jesus said unto him, feed my sheep. Come on. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, when thou was young, thou girdest. Okay, you know, I think that was it, brother. Yeah. Wasn't it? Verse 16 probably is where we should have, or 17, where we should have stopped. So obviously we know why Jesus did it three times. Can you imagine how Peter must have felt? We reading it right here. It says, he said unto him the third time, right? Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Probably the first time he hadn't caught on what, what Jesus was doing. Jesus messing with him, y'all. I mean, he really, really messing with him. It got, I mean, we, we read about the great and terrible guy, right? Here's a, here's a guy telling, here's God telling Peter, you love me, bro? You know as I love thee, man. <laughs> if you love me, feed my sheep, Hector. Then the second time, hey, bro. Do you love me? You know as I love thee. <laughs> now you got to act out the third one, bro. Because when he asked him the third time, he knew Jesus clowning. He's clowning, y'all. Not clowning to belittle him. Clowning like, bro, like, remember, you the one that was. Yeah. You the one. You the one that was, I'm ride or die. I'm ready to go to the pen. I'm ready to go deaf with you. I'm ready to do whatever with you. Read it just, you ain't, we ain't going to act out the third one. Read 16 again, my brother. The third time. Yeah, 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 the third time. Or, or 17, yes. Thank he you. saith unto, unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the he, third time. He was what? Grieved. Because what? He said unto him the third time. Oh, yeah, because he said it that third time. So he knew he was like, ah. Oh. Yeah, he, 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 well. Yeah, he dookieing on me. I was gonna say something else. Like he 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 poop he poop he pooping on me right now. He kind of like, you know, he like telling me about myself. Jesus don't got to do none of this, brothers and sisters. This is his way of like, <laughs> come on, bro. Like I told you, I picked you for a reason. I revealed all this stuff to you for a reason. Come on now, I'm finna bounce again. I done told you it's, it's, it's a, well, it wasn't fourth quarter for them. It was actually like first quarter, but it, it's, it's crunch time, right? I've been walking with you all this time. I've been revealing all this truth to you. Now it's your time to shine. I must go away. Let's go further. Let's go to, um, I believe it's Acts 4. Ooh, we got a long read. I done drew this thing out, huh? It's actually Acts chapter 4. John 7. Is it John said? Yeah. Oh, Lord, we ain't know how. Uh, definitely doing Elijah today, huh? Turning them little few scriptures, and we only on number seven. Let's look at Christ by the time he was killed is what the, uh, yeah. Let's look at Christ by the time he was killed. John 7, no, no, excuse me. Let's look at Christ before he was killed. John 7. Let's see. We already can see he was pretty bold the way he was talking to the, to the Pharisees and stuff, right? Let's see it for real, for real, how bold he was. John 7, 1, we going 1 through 18, or I think that's what it is, my brother. Good Lord, go ahead. After these things, Jesus, Jesus walked in Galilee, for, for he would not walk in Jewry because the Jews sought to kill him. After these things, Jesus walked in Galilee, for he would not walk in Jewry because the Jews sought to kill him. Go ahead. Now, the Jews' feast of tabernacles was at hand. His brethren therefore said unto him, Depart hence, and go into Judea, that the disciples also may see thy works that thou doest. For there is no man that doeth anything in secret, and himself seeketh to be known openly. If thou doest these things, show thyself to the world. For neither did his brethren believed in him. So the backdrop story we know on this, Jesus' own flesh and blood, Mary and Joseph, other sons that they had after Christ, did not believe that Jesus was the Christ. That's what we just read right there. For we read in verse 3, his brethren, right? Or verse 1. Do we read that verse 1? Well, let's just read that verse 1. Or verse 3. His brethren said unto him, talking to Jesus, what you doing hiding around here? Why are you not up at the feast? 
Verse 4, for there is no man that doeth anything in secret, and he himself seem to be known. you putting yourself out there. If thou do these things, show thyself to the world. For neither did his brethren believe in him. It's not talking about the disciples, brothers and sisters. Verse 6, and it probably wasn't talking about all the brethren, but who knows? It might have been talking about all of them at the time. That's some more homework for y'all. Verse 6, then Jesus said unto them, my time is yet not come, but your time is always ready. Mm -hmm. The world cannot hate you, but me it hated because I testified of it that the works thereof are evil. And you see, that's what's going to get us in trouble, brothers and sisters. That's God's will to give that same message. One more time, my brother. The world cannot what? Hate, hate you, you. But, but what? But hate, but me it hated because I testify of it that the works thereof are evil. Go ye up unto the feast. I go not up yet unto the feast, for my time is not yet full come. So he checked his brothers again, like, you go up there. I'm going. I'm just not going right now because it ain't, I ain't trying to get, I, I can't get killed today. I got to get killed on Passover, which, of course, we know we got advantage of knowing that. But he pretty much telling that, you go. It's not my time. Verse 9. When he had said these words unto them, he abode still in Galilee. He chilled there for a little while, then what? But when his brethren were gone up, then when he also up unto the feast, not openly, but as it were in secret. Uh -huh, he crept. Go ahead. Then the Jews sought him at the feast and said, where is he? Oh, we got people asking, where Jesus at? It's the feast. It's tabernacles. Go ahead. And there was much mourning among the people. Murmuring. Yes, sir. Murmuring concerning him. For some said, he is a good man. Others said, nay, but he deceiveth the people. How be it? No man spake openly of him for fear of the Jews. They were so, uh, the, the feast was so hot or the block was so hot, as I like to say, they wouldn't even openly speak of Jesus for fear of the Jews, right? That's what we just read, right? They murmured like, man, where he at? Jesus ain't coming? Shoot, this is the feast. I know he coming up here. He ain't missed the feast. Go ahead, verse 14. Now about the midst of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught. And the Jews marveled, saying, How knoweth this man letters, and have he never learned? Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but this that sent me. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. He that speaketh of himself speaketh of his own glory, but he that speaketh his glory that sent him, the same is true. And no righteousness is in him. No unrighteousness is in him. Skip down to verse 25, Brother Hector. Then said some of them of Jerusalem, Is not this he whom ye seek to kill? But lo, he speaketh boldly, and they say nothing unto him. Do the rulers know indeed that this is the very Christ? <laughs> so they said some of them, then said some of them of Jerusalem, is not this he whom they seek to kill? But lo, he speak boldly and they say nothing unto him. So I was, that was just an example of Christ was already set in the stage, brothers and sisters. How many of us know somebody trying to kill us going to go up there? Let's just keep it real, brothers and sisters. I, I know I went way in on this one right here. There's all kinds of examples you can give on this. I doubt very seriously any of us are going somewhere where they're talking about killing us. Not going to happen, huh? Jesus boldly went up there and said, because he knew that was what the whole deal was. Let's go further. Let's go to Acts 3 now. Acts chapter 3. Let's take a look at Peter after the fact, after he converted. Because remember, Jesus said, you got to feed my sheep. That's going to be the criteria for knowing if Peter loves him, right? right? He can keep all the commandments he want, huh? If he don't go out and do what he told him to do, which was what? Feed my sheep. Go ahead, my brother. One, Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour, hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they lay daily at the gate 
of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask alms of them that enter into the temple, whom seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. And Peter fastened his eyes upon him, and John said, Look on us. And he, and he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankles, bones received strength. And he, lifting up, stood and walked and entered into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew that it was he which set for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with the with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. As he, the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's greatly wondering. And Peter saw it, and he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel at this? Or why look so earnestly on us, as though by our own power or holiness have we made this man to walk? Then the God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, have glorified his son Jesus, whom we delivered up and denied him in the, in the presence of Pilate. And he was determined to let him go. But ye denied the Holy One and the just and desired a murder to be granted unto you and killed the Prince of Life, whom God hath raised from the dead, whom whereof we are witnesses in his name through faith. In his name hath made his, this man strong, whom ye see and know. Yeah, the faith which is him hath given unto this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Come on. And now, brethren, I would not through ignorance ye did it, as ye did also your rulers. But those things which God before had showed by the mouth of all his prophets, that Christ should suffer, he hath so fulfilled. Okay, so... Let's go right into chapter four. So we see Peter out there on the front line, right? He had two choices, brothers and sisters. He can go, go back to fishing or go on that mission. And I'm here to tell y'all, we better all go on that mission. Verse one, go ahead. And, <clears throat> excuse me. And as they spake unto the people, the priest and the captain of the temple, the Sadducees came upon them, being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection of, from the dead. You're getting some opposition. Come on. And they laid hands on them and put them in hold in the next day, for it was now eventide. Howbeit many of them which heard the word believed, and the number of the men was about 5,000. We, verse 5. And it came to pass on the morrow that the, the rulers and elders and scribes and Anna the high priest and Cepheus and John and Alexander and as many as were of the kindred of the high priest were gathered together at Jerusalem. These are the ones that had Jesus killed, by the way. Go ahead. And when they have set them in the midst, they asked, but what power or by what name have ye done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, you rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deeds done, important man, by what means is he is made whole? Be it known unto you all and to the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even to him, do the man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of your builders, which is become the head of the corner. Neither is the salvation in any other, for there is none other name under the heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Come on, Hector, verse 13. Now, when they saw that the boldness of Peter and John, they saw the what? Boldness of Peter and John, come on, and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Yes, sir. And beholding the man which was healed of standing with them, they could say nothing against it. But when they had commanded them, they go aside out of the council. They conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do to these men? For that indeed no, no notable, what? For that indeed a. 
notable miracle have been done by them is manifest to all them which dwell in Jerusalem. And when we cannot deny it, but it, but that it spread no further among the people, let us straightly threaten them that they speak thence no man in this name. Come on. And they called them and they commanded them not to speak all nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, Wherefore it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God judge ye. For we cannot speak the things which we have seen and heard. We cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard, 21. So when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding nothing now how they might punish them because of the people. For all men glorify God that which was done. Skip down to verse 29, Hector. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto us thy servants, that with all boldness they may speak thy word. And this is what we're going to need to start asking, brothers and sisters, because I'm telling you the heat is going to be turned up, whether we want to believe it or not. It's not going to always be just as the way things are today outside of these walls. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word. Keep going. By stretching forth thine hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child, Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spake the word of God with boldness. They spoke it with what, Hector? Boldness. They put themselves on the front line, Hector? Yes. Let's go right into chapter 5. Acts chapter 5, pick it up at verse 17. Acts chapter 5, verse 17, because they ain't through yet, and we almost done. Acts chapter 5, verse 17, go ahead. Then the high priest rose up, and all they that were with him, which is the, at the sect of the Sadducees, and were filled with indignation. Why they mad, Hector? Go ahead. And lay their hands on the apostles and put them in common prison. But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said, Go, stand and speak in the temple of the people all the words of this life. And when they heard that, they entered into the temple early in the morning and taught. But the high priest came and they that were with him and called the council together in all the senate of the children of Israel and sent to the prison to have them brought. But what? But when the officers came and found them not in the prison, they returned and told, saying, The prison truly found we shut in with all safety and the keeper standing without before the doors. But when we had opened, we found no man within. Pay attention. Verse 24. Now when the high priest and the captain of the temple and the chief priests heard these things, they they doubted of them whereunto this would grow. Come on. Then came one and told them, saying, Behold, the men whom ye put in prison standing in the temple and teaching the people. Behold, the men whom you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. After y'all just arrested them, they right back over there. Verse 26. Then went the captain with the officers and brought them without violence. For they feared the people, lest they should have been stoned. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council. And the high priest asked them, saying, Did not we straightly command you that you should not teach in this name? And behold, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intent to bring this man's blood upon us. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. And God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you slew and hanged on a tree. Him hath God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are his witnesses of these things. And so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given unto them that obey him. 33. When they heard that, they were cut in their heart and took counsel to slay him. Oh, the heat turned up. Go ahead. Then stood up one in the council, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a doctor of the law, had a, a reputation among all the people, 
and, com and commanded to put the apostles forth a little space and said unto them, Ye men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what ye intend to do as touching these men. For these, for before these days rose up the Theodotus, boasting himself to be somebody, to whom a number of men, about 400, joined themselves, whom was slain, all in all, as many as obeyed him, were scattered and brought to naught. Who else? After this man rose up Judas of Galilee in the days of taxing and drew away many people, much people after him. Mm -hmm. He also perished, and all, even as many as obeyed him, were disp dispersed. Come on. And now I say unto you, re refrain from these men and let them alone, for it is. For, for it, for this, for if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to naught. But if it be of God, you cannot overthrow it, lest happily ye be found even to fight against God. Come on. And him they agreed upon, agreed. And they that had called the apostles and beaten them. <laughs> they, they did what? And when they had called the apostles and did what? Beaten them. Beaten them. I like the way you said that. Beaten them. Go ahead. They commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus, and they let them go. Verse 41. And they departed from the prince of the council, presence of the council, and rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for this name. Did they stop teaching, Brother Hector? Verse no. 42. And daily in the temple and in every house, they ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. And we can kind of see what the righteous are bold as a lion look like now, right? It don't stop, brothers and sisters. It don't stop. Let's go to 1 Peter 5 and pick it up at verse 8. It don't stop, brothers and sisters. First Peter 5, verse 8. Because this is why we got to be like a lion. Go ahead. Be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a rolling lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. You got to fight what? Fire with fire, brothers and sisters. Remember, he wants to have us back on his team. You can't be no poodle and fight against a lion. Not even a pit bull, brothers and sisters. One more time. Verse 8, be sober, be what? Vigilant. You better watch out. Go ahead. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. And so the Lord letting it be known. I know he's something. He ain't comp he compared. He he basically said Satan out there like a lion. I mean, we can't make this up, right? And we know the attributes of a lion, and we know the Lord is telling us to be what bold as a lion. Because you got in order to stand up to a lion, you got to be one, right? Go ahead. Nine. Whom resisteth steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions and accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. So it says, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Go ahead. <clears throat> but the God of all grace, whom hath called us unto eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. After you do what for a while? Suffer a while, make you perfect. Yeah, after you suffer for a while. Go tell your neighbor that at church on Sunday, huh? After you suffer a while, go ahead, verse 11. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And we're going to go to the last place because I'm going to just finish with this. because we, You know that's the title of the lesson, Proverbs 28 and 1. Let's go there. Remember I said, to whom much is what? Given much is required. When the Lord came up out of that grave, brothers and sisters, in front of them men and in front of Mary Magdalene and all of them, <laughs> all bets was off. That's like God tying your hand behind your back and telling you, go on out there. You got two choices, either be with it, or, like I said, or you not. Because they were given a lot, weren't they? Everybody didn't see Jesus. We have not seen Jesus after he is resurrected, right? So it's a level of boldness. It's a level of faith. It's a level of requirement that's going to be of us. They surely 
had an extra burden on their shoulders. Wouldn't you agree? Because they seen him, brothers and sisters. You can't, you can't fake seeing somebody come from the dead. You can't fake it. But at the end of the day, let's go to the last place. Proverbs 28, verse 1. When you get there, go ahead. The wicked flee when no man pursues. They do what? What the wicked do? Flee when no man pursues. They run, huh? Go ahead. But the righteous are bold as a lion. One more time, my brother Hector. The wicked flee when no man pursues. I mean, when nobody chasing you, they run. Think about that. That's scary, scary, huh? For you to run and there's nobody chasing you. God called that scary and he called it wicked is what he called it, right? Wicked. The wicked flee when no man pursueth, but what? But the righteous are bold as a lion. <laughs> the righteous? But the what? Righteous are bold as a lion. Oh, shoot. That's the way you were saying it up. But the righteous, I got to make sure we know what we talking about. But the righteous, I know your, mouth, your, your lips tired from all that reading. I get it. I've been there, Brother Hector. But the righteous are bold as a lion. And I hope you got some understanding in Jesus' name. We had a regular Sabbath announcement. Our prayers is that the eyes of your understanding were in line by today's lesson. Please tune in in the Kingdom Come television program, which airs various locations. Please join us at other study classes for question and answering Bible study every Wednesday night at 7 via conference call 860-970-0010 with access code 3435-3133-POUND. Also, stream live via our website at thykingdomcome7.com. If you feel you are ready to be baptized, please sign the baptism list located in the hallway and speak with an elder. The following is the dress code for all our services, our clothing, our clothing should be modest in appearance, nothing tight fitting, over baggy, sagging, or revealing should be worn. Men are to remove head, hats and head, <clears throat> men are to remove hats and all head coverings, no shorts. Women should wear a head covering, such as a hat or scarf, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 1 through 7. If your child becomes noisy during the lesson, Distracting other members, please remove him or her from the room. Any ties and or free will offering should be placed in an offering envelope and put in the offering box located in the hallway. Pray for our strength as we pray for you. Until next Sabbath, peace. Peace. Okay. Reminder, tomorrow we will be taking care of the community. We will meet at the church at 945. We will be heading out at 10.15 a.m. The next project date to help the community will be Sunday, October 30th. All right. So I'm sure they know we'll take care of the community. That's beautiful, brother. Putting it in them words like that. We're going to take care of the community tomorrow. That probably is beyond just physical needs. You know, sometimes, you know, they be needing some spiritual needs, right? Because, you know, I just say this. You know, we know we, we got the uh, homeless outreach at Skid Row. You know, I'll be honest with you, brothers and sisters, you know, when I was in Sunday church, you know, you just have people come up and ask for prayers and stuff like that. Like, that stuff is uncomfortable, but we get to a point now where when you see somebody doing bad and they ask you for some prayer, there's only two things you can do, right? Either ask another brother to pray for them or pray for them yourself. And it's got to be done, and we got to have faith that them prayers is being heard as uncomfortable as it might be. You need to read this or you want me to get it? All right, I'm on. Uh, it said, okay, so you already did that, right? Yeah, it was, it was the feast. The feast days, yeah, let's switch gears. So, yeah, praise the Lord that y'all going to do that. That's a beautiful thing, my brother. Oh, sorry. <laughs> that's a beautiful, that's a beautiful, that's a beautiful thing that y'all are uh, taking that upon yourselves to help the community around here. The feast days are upon us. The first one is sundown, September 26th to sundown on September 27th. Service will be held at 1 p.m. on September 27th followed by the Day of Atonement, sundown October 5th to sundown October 6th. Service will be held at 1 p.m. on October 6th. 
Next is Tabernacles. It will be sundown October 10th to sundown October 11th. Service will be held on October 11th at 1 p.m., followed by the eighth day feast. It will be sundown October 17th to sundown October 18th. Service will be held at 1 p.m. on October 18th. I don't have nothing further, brothers and sisters. Anybody out there got any uh, prayer requests or anything? Um, you guys good to go, huh? I heard that. We're going to go ahead and uh, close out. Our Father, our Father, which art in heaven, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this day. Give us this day. Our daily bread. Our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the power. And the glory. And the glory. Forever. Forever. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. For he is good. For he is good. And his mercy endures forever. And his mercy endures forever. Praise the Lord God of Israel. Praise the Lord God of Israel. For he is good. For he is good. And his mercy endures forever. And his mercy endures forever. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. The Holy One of Israel. The Holy One of Israel. The King of Kings. The King of Kings. And Lord of Lords. And Lord of Lords. The one true God. The one true God. And, and there is no other. And there is no other. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.